without reading the script or anything, I, I went in and I met with um, Rob, Linda, and Joe. And um, from that first meeting, they they told me about the story and that I would, you know, be playing <laughs> Sleeping Beauty, which, oh my God, that that's like a dream come true for every girl in the whole world, I, a Disney princess. And, um, and from that meeting, we just, we got along so well and um, they were so nice and then um, they, they gave me the script after that meeting, and I went home and read it right away. <laughs> it's the classic story of, you know, Sleeping Beauty plus so much more information. So you get to, you get to know why things happen and why, you know, Maleficent becomes so evil and sort of the steps that it takes. To, because, you know, people aren't just evil just because, you know, there has to be a cause and, and you and in our film you get to see sort of what that cause is <laughs> she's such an like an iconic character you know you see her and oh that's sleeping beauty that's aurora you, you you just know so um i was hoping that i could sort of bring the essence of her and i know like you, when you see pictures of her sort of the way she stands with her hands and i, I was just sort of taking it all in and before the mo before we started filming this movie i watched the animated a movie again just to sort of see if I could pick up on any little mannerisms that she did while she's sort of in the forest and <laughs> sort of brought those little princess elements but you know also wanting to make her um you know have those elements but also make her a real person not just a just an animated character so <laughs> Thistlewit, Flittle, and Not Grass are the the pixies and they're they're my aunts as well so and when you get to see them they're like this big they're tiny and then um when they become you know the human form when they have to take care of baby aurora you know they grow big and they have to be like peasant women which i don't think they enjoy very much they they like their wings and their funny costumes um and yeah they're they are so funny and they are just amazing in it all three of them are, they bring really a lot of humor to it Maleficent, I mean, you think of her as the evil, the evil sort of, the evil fairy in, in this one, um, and, you know, with the horns and so the intensity and all, and all that, and we definitely have that, I mean, Angelina is, there's no one better to play Maleficent, she is, oh, oh just so perfect. Tiaval is um, Maleficent's bird, sort of her pet bird, and she gets, we get, in our film, we get to see him as a man as well, because she turns him, she turns him into many things in the movie, but um, she, she turns him into a man, and that, um, and when I meet, and when I'm little, I, I, I play with the bird, I do see the bird I pet, you know, and I have a pretty bird is what I call him, and, um, and then when I get older, I get to see, see him in sort of him as a man, do you have all the do you have all the man? So he has he takes many different forms. In the beginning, you sort of you get to see his character from when he's young, and sort of it's a journey for him as much as it, as much as it is for Maleficent in a way. So you get to sort of see why he becomes so evil and why she becomes you know so evil. So they both have a reason for it. Maleficent and Aurora have definitely much more complex relationship in in this one um, because Maleficent after you know she does curse her and that <laughs> that Christie scenes um, after that Maleficent sort of follows Aurora around um, while Aurora is growing up so you get to see me sort of in different stages as you know young a toddler and then sort of eight years old and then you finally see me sort of as a teenager and Maleficent is sort of there hiding away every in every step of those stages 